saying, you know, all the best, see you later, you're on your own. It's here to help. And uh, as you're probably hearing, we're trying to encourage groups to come together and collectively share. Um, it doesn't all have to come back to me. There's some great people now that are keying on top of this. And so whatever your problem is, we'll always try and find a way to, to help you get through it. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. A uh, question from the chat group. Uh, what are the positions in the court as far as the trusts are concerned, and are there three trusts operating at the same time? Great question. No, there's not. There are two trusts operating, but not three. Uh, one trust is the, and of course you you can't be you can't be seen there being the trustee of two trusts at the same time. Um, you can't be seen there as the uh, administrator of two trusts at the same time. So <clears throat> they play their good old games of bait and switch. There are two trusts operating simultaneously at the same time at, at the three forms of court. The one that is the most relevant. <clears throat> to them is the matter at hand. It, it's a temporary trust and it is in fact a sister KV. It's a constructive trust. So the, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I, I, I must admit that I did create some confusion as to the roles of, that are being held by the judge, the clerk and the uh, prosecutor, but this is specifically and exactly the roles that are being held. The matter, is a trust and it, it exists for the life of the matter and the performance of the matter and is separate to the SESTA KVs but is attached to the SESTA KVs and is why they add bonds to your account at the clerk's office because they're adding a matter and then the financials to that and in that particular arrangement the judge is sitting there as the uh, effectively the uh, trustee, uh, the um, prosecutor is still the executor, and the clerk is rolling in administration. Now, the next one, which is the SESTA KV, when they leave and they return, they are changing not just the form of court, but the reason their powers change is that they are actually now evoking the particular SESTA KV. The first SESTA KV they're evoking should be self-evident. What's the first thing they ask you? What is your name? Well, guess what? The property in the SESTA KV, the first SESTA KV, is your name. So that obviously is the first SESTA KV. Uh, now, in that case, the clerk is the trustee, the judge is the administrator, and the prosecutor is the executor. Uh, now that is the um, arrangement for the SESTA KV and the arrangement for the constructive trust, which is the matter. So I, again, I know it sounds confusing, but I'm trying to sort of make it clear, you never ever get the right of being the trustee. You never get the right of being trustee. Why? Because a trustee holds by definition legal title the trustee can then uh, collapse or convey the property and collapse the trust. And if they ever gave us the trusteeship, the first thing we'd do is collapse the trust. So we are only ever, in this scenario, the beneficiary and then the executor at the end of the matter where they make us the executor by signing where we guarantee our performance only after we've accepted the benefit. I mean, you're not made executor until you accept the benefit, all right? So I hope that answers that scenario of who's who in the zoo. Great. Thank you, Frank. All right, we have a caller. Um, I think it's the CIN Brewer. Let's see if that... Uh, are you there? Do you have a question? Yes. Is this oh, me? Hi. Hi. Um, my question is that I went through foreclosures where uh, we did administrative procedures. And are you familiar with those? I mean, familiar, yeah, I'm familiar with some of the administrative procedures. It depends on, on, on exactly what you mean. But so I may not be, so I'm not quite sure what you mean. But keep going. Okay. Well, we did a tort claim, basically. We did the administrative procedures through a tort claim before they ever foreclosed on the first house. We sent in instruments to pay off the house. They, 
They kept the instruments and foreclosed on the houses. Even, uh, even though I had a default contract with them before they ever took the first house, they still foreclosed on all three houses. They have transferred these houses by a trustee deed down at the county. I have never given up my claim on the property um, in writing. What I chose to do, because I knew no other option at that time, um, and I have UCC files on them with the, using the property as collateral. collateral. Um, what I chose to do was step into the local court and ask the judge to officially publicly sign my default order. Now, of course, he's resisting doing this, even though I have a default order. Um, how can I assist myself in completing this process? Because the local county recorder will not file my documents on the properties, giving me my default judgment, unless it's a court-ordered thing. Can you help <laughs> understand? Yeah, I understand what you've done. Um, th th let me just fill in a couple of blanks that I now understand about how they get to do what they do with foreclosures. And I don't want to, I don't, I'll, be, I'll be really brief, but it, it is directly relevant to what you do as a next step. So let, let's start with a couple of things. Um, firstly, you, hopefully you heard me speak earlier about deeds and about yep. the role of ecclesiastical officers and deeds. Now, the clerk is a senior ecclesiastical officer. So as a senior ecclesiastical officer, that clerk can pretty much be directed, because they are directed, they don't really know how powerful they are. Some do, but most just are doing a job, where effectively they can uh, assign the title through a deed poll, funnily enough, a deed poll, um, to the bank or to whomever, and it's pretty much game over. Yeah? And that, under their system, is perfectly lawful. Perfectly lawful. Because um, they have the right to do that. Now, um, the problem you have... Well, let me keep going on a couple of things of foreclosure and then the, then the challenge you have and then how, to, how we solve this. The, the, the issue of a foreclosure is, is, is two things that they want to trick you into not dealing with. The first is that you are a tenant. You, don't, you never own the property. The bank owns the property, you're the landlord. So a mortgage is a lien, a lease, and a loan. A lien, a lease, and a loan. And the lease component is the stuff that they hide. They trick you into believing you own the property, you don't own the property. Um, and what they try and get you to do is they don't want you to pay the rent. What's the rent? The rent is the interest, not the principal, the interest. So if you don't pay a, a single thing, you become in law what's known as a delinquent or a delinquent tenant, but the delinquency is the key element. Now remember they're a bank? Once they get you into the state of being able to declare you're a delinquent, then you lose any claim whatsoever to being able to get remedy because you are effectively incompetent by being incapable of performing. Performance is the essential element of keeping the basic principles of the contract alive. And the principles of the contract alive is that you are a tenant in that property. You want to remain in that property. So the way to uh, obviate that is to ensure that you have uh, written or submitted to the clerk your statement of financial affairs. If you haven't gone through the EDP, this is just straight up, uh, where you place a consideration and you at least have a deposit into the clerk that you are still paying some form of rent and you've done it in a way that you expose through knowledge that you know you're a tenant. That is a crucial element. The other element that they get to do is to deny you possession by effectively ordering an eviction, which is effectively a, a letter of mark where it is a forced act, uh, you can never be, be forced to um, uh, leave a property. They can only argue that it's lawful by you being delinquent. So they're the two elements that they are playing with in foreclosure, and that is defined uh, quite clearly under the articles of foreclosure under positive law. Now, okay. as to your specific, okay. now, as to your yeah. specific matter at hand, 
you have chosen to go down a particular route without addressing your standing. Now, okay. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of two things. I ask you to email me through the website because I'm going to have to take any follow-up questions offline only because of time. I hope you don't mind, but I don't want to leave you on a lurch. I, I, I merely just want to add one more thing and then ask you to email me as a follow-up, please. Yes, the problem, sir. Yeah, a problem I see specifically that you face is that you have not addressed your standing which means that if you still wish to pursue administrative procedure, which is using their, their procedures against them, which, by the way, is exactly what we're doing with these deed polls, you, however, are doing it from the position that you have no right of property. You have no right. But Sestico V's are not being challenged. You have not challenged the underlying principles that uh, is uh, stacking the deck against you. And until you do that, I can tell you that the chances of you succeeding, I would think, are zero. So email me, certainly read the deed polls, read your instructions, uh, read about foreclosures, and I'm sure something can be found through. Okay? So I'm sorry I, I didn't do the follow-up questions, but I, I have given a lot of bit of information there to you. But I'm sure within that, we can find up something that can try and help you. Okay? Great. Thank you, Frank. Oh, could we wrap up with one more question? This is a, an important question that might help some folks. Uh, could you please explain the danger of mixing the EDP and other methods? That is an excellent, excellent question. The central difference to what we are talking about tonight and what I have spoken about on every single talk show is that all of this is based on competence. And competence is understanding who you are. It's understanding that before you use something, you know what you're doing and that you are not merely uh, firing off bullets with no knowledge of what is implied. The danger of mixing what we are discussing with other quote-unquote magic cures or quote-unquote silver bullets is that on the one hand, you are claiming competence, but then you are exposing that as an illusion by still uh, behaving and using things without competence. I'll give you, give you an example. Um, one way to demonstrate competence in the system is to establish a new bank account, a special deposit account, uh, which requires a deed of trust, which we have. We have copies of deed, new deeds of trust, as well as uh, uh, an EIN number, an uh, IRS EIN number. Now, you can register under the SSS, sorry, SSS, SS4 form an EIN number where the EIN is registered for the trust. However, there is one remedy being promoted hard under the quote-unquote executor, executrix stuff, where it says, no, 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 go and register as an estate. Well, an estate is an artificial trust corpus. That is the definition of an estate, contrary to what blacks and other things tell you. It is a sester KV. So if you go and do what I've just said, some people are doing, then you have gone and created your own SESTA KV registered to the IRS. So then if you go and start using this where you're collapsing SESTA KVs, yet on the other hand, you've set up the wrong kind of structure with IRS, you are showing a level of incompetence. And incompetence will keep us enslaved. So I think that's an excellent question. And whilst it is frustrating for people, I really hope and urge you to be very careful and very thoughtful that often rushing is what gets us into trouble and rushing us makes us into more trouble. So I urge to read, I urge you to question, I urge you to understand. So thank you for that question. Great question. Okay, Frank, thank you. And uh, for next week, we're going to be uh, on for next week. Was that the uh, agreement there? Yes. Okay, so we'll be coming back on Talk Show next week, same time. 
9 p.m. Eastern. Sorry we couldn't get to uh, probably you.